Here with more is The Hill's John Solomon, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan, and author of the number one bestseller, The Russian Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton Frame Donald Trump, now in paperback. Uh, let's start, John Solomon, with you and your breaking news. This is amazing. Papadopoulos and Page, exculpatory information was withheld from the FISA court on top of what we know? Yeah, listen, today's the day uh, more than any other that you can see the dual justice system. You can see in Pete Stroke how the FBI took evidence of criminality, the negligent handling of emails, turned it into an exoneration, then took the evidence of innocence and turned it into a criminal investigation against Donald Trump. It's extraordinary. What we learned is that these two men, the two focuses, George Papadopoulos, Carter Page, the people on whom they opened up the entire Russian collusion investigation, were captured talking to an FBI informer in making exculpatory statements, spontaneous admissions of innocence. They did not meet with Russia. They did not hack emails uh, uh, with, Clinton, uh, with the uh, Russians and, in fact, said that they, they would consider that treasonous, wouldn't even be involved in it. Multiple statements of innocence, no evidence that that was told to the FISA court. And it's important to note these statements of innocence occurred in August and September of 2016, one month before the first FISA warrant was issued. All right, let me go on the legal side, to Greg Jarrett, and then we'll get to the investigative side. Greg, on top of Bruce Orr last week, on top of Lisa Page this mm -hmm. week, now we know this. Everybody was warned that Steele hated right. Donald Trump. We know Hillary paid for this. She used DNC money she was controlling right. to pay for this. The FBI paid for this, sadly. And we also know Russian oligarchs paid for this phony dossier sure. that Steele doesn't stand by. Now John's story. Legally, right. let's talk about the ramifications. And, and hats off to John for that incredible reporting. But we knew it all along, right? I mean, we knew that Carter Page um, had not colluded with anybody. We knew the dossier was phony. We knew that George Papadopoulos hadn't done anything wrong. But now we know the FBI truly knew all of this through their confidential informant. The law requires them to provide the FISA court with, court with any exculpatory evidence Failing to do so can be a crime. Not only that, but they didn't verify as the law requires the information they were submitting. So, you know, in my judgment, and I identify it in the book, six different felonies may have occurred there. You know, Congressman, you've been so great on this, and I also now applaud a new member. I didn't know Congressman Collins, uh, I think, very courageous, yep. rightly yep. giving information. There's so much more to come. Once, once the floodgates open, it's going to come cascading down. But here's my question. Everything seems to be focused around the dossier. Everything. Yeah. The dossier could never be verified because Steele, under oath in an interrogatory, as I told my audience, he said, I have no idea if it's true. But what's worse, then it was used to bludgeon. Yeah. Well, first propagandize the American people, then to bludgeon Donald Trump. And the FISA courts were lied to. Comey signed the first one in October of 16. In January of 17, he tells President-elect Trump it's salacious and unverified, the opposite of what he said in October. Is that right. a crime? Well, we'll find out, but I, I think you're exactly right. Remember, they didn't tell the court the dossier was unverified. They didn't tell the court who paid for it, namely the Clinton campaign. They didn't tell the court that Christopher Steele, the guy who wrote it, was desperate that Trump not win. They didn't tell the court that Christopher Steele had been fired by the FBI because he's out leaking information. And now, because of John's reporting, we know they didn't tell the court other exculpatory information about Carter Page and George Papadopoulos. That's a lot not to share with a secret court, especially, Sean, when you're getting a warrant to go spy on the other party's campaign. But that is exactly what happened, and that's why you're so right. This has been wrong from the get-go. That's why these investigations are important, and that we do what you said earlier. We have a real single standard in this country. Shouldn't be two standards. Shouldn't be just one set of rule for us regular folk and a different set if your name is Clinton, Comey, Lynch, Lerners, Page, Strzok. It's got to be one set of rules in this country, and that's equal treatment under the law. You know, nine months, Lisa Page said they investigated and struck confirmed. They found no Trump-Russia collusion before the appointment of Mueller, John Solomon. All the way up to or go ahead, Congressman, go ahead. No, I was just going to say all the way up until May 17, 2017, when they made Bob Mueller special counsel, they had zero, zero evidence That's of any July type of collusion. That's from July 2016. Yeah. Yes. All the way, all that time, still no evidence, and yet they moved ahead with this whole thing. John Solomon, what are your sources telling you? Because, uh, you know, I'm getting mixed reviews. Some are saying 
just like Nunes's committee, just like the Burr committee, just like everybody else, there's no evidence of any collusion. But then I'm also hearing, well, what's the IG going to come out about FISA abuse? What's the, what is on Uber doing? Does anybody even know? You know, I think there's a new sheriff in town with uh, the new attorney general, Bill Barr, and I think a lot of things are changing internally in the Justice Department. We can't see them, but Andrew Weissman's departure today is an example of the overturn and change that we're going to see in the next few months. I think the single most important thing that will happen, as soon as Bob Mueller's report comes in, as soon as the president is no longer in legal jeopardy, it's incumbent upon the president to declassify those documents. Yes. Let us see the FBI's true activity for what it is, not for what it was made to look like for a two-year mirage. Well, we've all been calling for it. The president has the ability to do it. But is it, you know, we've talked about the need for a special counsel. But this now, if we're going to have equal justice, knowing that the Hillary investigation was rigged, there's, it's overwhelming evidence now. It's incontrovertible, Greg. Will the new attorney general do his job? Sure. And I, I hope he reads the same transcripts of Lisa Page and Peter Strzok that we've now read and are available for the public to read because it's clear from both of them that the fix was in. You know, Comey always said, oh, it was my decision uh, to clear Hillary Clinton. And, and Peter Strzok said it was Comey's decision to change the language. That was his public testimony. Now we see today in his private testimony saying, no, it was the DOJ, and Lisa Page said, yep, they told us to stand down on Hillary Should, Clinton. Will Congress, uh, by, I would got to believe that the Attorney General now, uh, Lynch, we've got to see her emails, we've got oh, to see her yeah. correspondence, we've got to, uh, now that we're, it's pointing in that direction. And I also think we have a legitimate question, what did President Obama know, when did he know it? Jim. No, I agree, Sean. Never forget the code names they gave him. The, mid, uh, the Clinton exam, uh, Clinton investigation was called the mid-year exam. The Trump-Russia investigation was called crossfire hurricane. That shows you the bias that existed right from the get-go. All right. Uh, do you all agree with the statement? You can shake your heads. This is about to break wide open, and many of these players are about to see a day of reckoning. Yes or no? Shake your head. Yes. Yes. I hope yeah. so, too. My sources are.